The Viltrox DC550 Pro is an awesome camera monitor. It's got a 1920 by 1080 p display with 1200 nits of brightness, and it's got all the key features that content creators could ever need. You've got things like Zebra, you've got focus peaking, you've got inputs, you've got waveforms. It's got everything. If you're looking for one and you've been searching the internet, trying to find different monitors, just go for this one. It's a fantastic monitor for $200. In this review, we're gonna do a quick unboxing, have a look at the monitor itself, I'm going to show you what it's like to use outside and I'm also going to show you how you can mount it to a gimbal. All the links are in the description below. If you've got any questions, leave one in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. The monitor features a bevel controller just like the ones you find on the Apple Watch Ultras and it's also got a menu system that's pretty similar to Blackmagic in simplicity as in it's really intuitive and it's just easy to use which is what I like about it. With this monitor you do get a few extra bits, you do get a battery included which is quite unusual and you get a proper lens hood that's made out of hard plastic which also doubles up as a screen cover and it's super easy to flip out and you can remove it as well. Inside the box you get a hardened travelling case which will give it plenty of protection. It's pretty solid and it's in a zip enclosure. You get a bunch of Chinese instructions which went straight in the bin. A high quality swivel mount which is quite adjustable and then you've got a really nice little battery it's an MPF 550 from Viltrox and it's also got a power meter on the back which is a nice neat touch so you know how much battery you've got left then we've got the DC 550 Pro with its uh, front cover on the screen which is also a hood and to open that just press the button and up it pops and clips into place and it really is a good piece of equipment in the bag we've got all the HDMI connections there's three of them You've got a USB-A to USB-C, so you can charge the battery. Then we've got a mini HDMI to proper HDMI, which is handy for most Sony cameras. And then included is a full-size HDMI to HDMI. So basically, Viltrox has got you covered. I also bought a Dutec one because I wanted one that's right angle and had a bendy cord, so it could be stretchy and quite compact. So I'd recommend getting one of these if you're going to mount it to a gimbal. With all the wrapping removed, this is what it looks like in the box. So it's all ready to go for your shoot. The MPF 550 battery is a fairly standard model. It's quite a nice touch that they put the power meter on there. And it's also got a USB-C charging. So you can charge it off most common phone chargers. And it's got little arrows to show you which way to insert it. And one thing that really did confuse me was why they put the Viltrox logo upside down on the battery. But there we go, I guess someone screwed up. It just slots into place, snaps in, and that's the battery ready to go. To take the battery off, just press the button and slide it downwards and it will unclip. And to put it back on, to change batteries, just clip it in, it locks into place. And you've got an SD card reader, so you can put on your LUTs into this slot here. You've got function one, function two, function three, and a back button. And then we've got a dial similar to what you have on the Apple Watches, and we've got the power on and off switch. Power it up, open the screen up, and it takes a couple of seconds for it to boot up. You'll get the Viltrox welcome screen, and you'll get all the waveforms and everything coming on. For power inputs, it's got a 5 volt USB-C, and you've got a tripod mount, and you've got a 12 volt DC in for your D-Tap. You've got HDMI out, HDMI in, another tripod mount, and you've got a 3.5mm headphone jack. To mount it to the camera, get the mount, and just screw it into the bottom and screw it in finger tight you don't need to go crazy with this make sure before you put it on the camera make sure that's loosened off all the way to the top to mount it on the camera just remove the hot shoe cover from the camera if there is one on there and then pick up the monitor and then what we're going to do is slide the flat groove into the top of the camera and then tighten it up clockwise Next, get the HDMI cable and put it in the HDMI in. Once you put in HDMI in on the monitor, open up the HDMI port on your camera and then plug in the HDMI. Once it's plugged into the in, power up the camera, open up the screen cover and then power on the Viltrox with the switch on the left. It'll take a couple of seconds for it to boot up and then it'll synchronize with the camera and you should see that you've got your camera input onto the monitor. Once it's mounted on the camera you can then adjust the tilt angle just by pushing it up or down and adjust it as required. When not in use you can close the hood and this will protect the screen. 
and you can also remove the screen hood altogether by just pulling it off from the top it just snaps off and it's got like three prongs that hold it in place and just give it a light pull and then it's removed from the camera and you can use it without the hood you can see there we've got the three prongs that hold it in place and to put it back on simply just push it into place and it should snap in put your finger on the latch on the open pop it open and you've got a lens hood again by swiping up and down you can adjust the volume controls on the left hand side if you swipe up and down on the right, you adjust the brightness. And to access the menus, F1 will get you into your waveforms. So you see you've got full waveform there, you've got all your vector scopes, press F1 again, they disappear. F2, you have false colour. F3, just brings up some more menu options. So you see there you've got a volume bar, we can turn things on, histogram. Turn the histogram on and off. Turn the vector scope on and off on the right hand side. We've got parade. You can have RGB, the Y or the YUV. So it's up to you which one you want to use. You've got full waveform. We can turn that on and off. And you've got a LUT table. So you can choose from Blackmagic, C Log 2, S Log 3, V Log, F Log. I turn mine off because I just have it on the standard. And then we can go into the hammer. We've got focus peaking. You've got your zebras. Again, you can set it to grey, red, green, blue channels. You can have under or over scan. You can flip it around as well. So we can flip it all different directions. You can also rotate the monitor. And then we've got the third menu where you can add grids. So you can put target points on the screen, you can set different aspect ratios, you can enable four by three, you can do anamorphic, so it's got two anamorphic options and then you've got a vertical option. And you can set your full screen, I've got mine set to auto, so you've got all these output resolutions. And you can zoom in, so if I want to zoom in four times, we can do that. And it has like a pinch to zoom feature. So you can zoom in like you would on a touchscreen phone. And then moving on to the last screen, you've got all your monitor adjustments. So you've got brightness, you've got contrast, saturation, hue, sharpness, so we can adjust all these. Backlight, so we can adjust the brightness. Colour temperature on the monitor, I generally have mine set to 5600K. RGB, you can adjust everything like the reds, the blues and the greens. So if you want to fine tune your monitor to get it absolutely bang on to how you like your look. And also we get the settings in the top right corner. So you can adjust things like language, you've got fan speed, I've got mine set to low. And to be fair, the fan is running right now and you probably won't even hear it when it's on high. It's pretty noticeable. So I keep mine on low. You've got volume settings, you've got menu transparency so we can adjust the on-screen display. We've got a reset so you can reset it to factory defaults, and you can match the function keys to different options. I can match function one, I can set function two or I can set function three and map it to whatever I want there. I'm going to leave them on default because it's absolutely perfect for me and that's pretty much the menu system. And our monitor's really clear. I, I can see this no problems at all in this lighting. So here's our Nikon Z8 monitor, which is pretty hard to see in this light. And then I'll move up to the Viltrox. And there you have it. You can see it absolutely super clear. I've got focus peaking enabled, so we can see exactly what's sharp on here. And the viewing angles, you can see there's not a lot of reflection. It's perfectly usable with the hood up in the bright sunlight or good lighting. And this is what it looks like if I take the cover off. Even with the cover off, it is still pretty usable as a monitor. But obviously if you're out in bright sunlight, cover on is much better. So I'm just gonna check out the menu system by pressing the button on the right. As you can see there, they are really easy to see in this light. And you can just adjust the scroll wheel, cycle through your menus to get the setting you want. And it's just a really user-friendly little monitor. I really like this iPhone style dial. As you can see, you've got the same sort of crown that you've got on the Apple Watch. It navigates in a similar way, you move it and scroll it, it works the same on this. You move the dial and it adjusts it through the menus. The first time I fired it up, 
it was in Chinese, but luckily I managed to press that button and it turned it into English. One thing to note, if you press the button, it does have a timer on it. So the display will show briefly for a few moments and eventually it will just disappear and go back to being a normal monitor. Which is kind of a nice feature, so you don't accidentally hit any of the wrong settings. There we go, it's gone back to no display on there. The visibility is really good on this, even carrying it walking around freehand. I can quite happily use this in this lighting. Everything looks really sharp and detailed. And it's also adjustable, so if you want to tilt it, get any low shots, we can tilt it down and bring it low. And it's crystal clear. One of the main reasons I like monitors is because you can have focus peaking on. This camera doesn't have focus peaking in autofocus and the monitor allows me to make sure my focus is razor sharp. So I've got it focused on my van and as you can see, like the wheels and all the bottom of the van and the top of the van, and I've got the red lines on them, which indicates that they're in focus, which is ideal when you're working on a shoot. You guarantee your focus is absolutely bang on. And I also like to have my zebras turned on as well so I can see where all the hot spots on the image are, where it's maybe a bit overexposed. Again, you could adjust this with an ND filter or you could adjust it with a the exposure itself and there we go remove the hot spots so it's super easy to see by pressing the function keys we can turn on the vector scopes and the waveform press f1 again and it goes off then i've got f2 that's mapped to false color so just by rolling the exposure up and down we can see it's showing us in the red that's overexposed so i'm just showing, shutting down the aperture and there we go it's getting us a much better exposure i've taken the battery off and i'm going to see if my power bank will power this on a USB-C. So I've got a Elincron power bank, which is quite a popular one to use. Plugged it in with the USB-C here and the USB on the monitor. And let's see what happens when we power it up. Will it work? And this is the moment of truth. Power on the monitor. Make sure the power bank is on. Oh, there we go. It's lighting up. Give it a couple of seconds. And boom, we have now got our power bank running the monitor so that will run off a USB-C. So if you're in a pinch and your battery's just died and you have a power bank handy you can stick that in your pocket and your monitor's still going to run and there's the proof no battery on it just running purely off USB-C. If you're doing pieces to camera and you want to film yourself and you don't have a cameraman you just spin it around on the camera and it works absolutely perfectly this is what I'm seeing. From where I'm filming, I can see that monitor perfectly. I can tell everything's in focus as I've got all the focus peaking on. I should be able to see it on my hand. I've got red lines appearing. And as I get closer to the camera, we see the red lines on the iPhone here, which indicates that we are sharp and in focus. And as you can see, the T5 behind me is also in focus. So yeah, it's great as a little external monitor if you want to film yourself. Rotating it is really straightforward. Just undo the collar slightly anti-clockwise, twist the monitor around, adjust it and then lock the collar off finger tight. So your camera screen's gone to sleep and it's gone dark on here, what is the response time? So if I power the camera back up, our screen's on there and literally it's about two seconds and you're back up and running on the monitor. The way I like to have mine set up is have the volume bar turned on and then we click on the little hammer and the other ones I'll have on is the focus peaking so we can see what's sharp and then I'll go onto my zebras, make sure my zebras are turned on and you can adjust them here. I usually leave them on about 90, which is good. And then I leave everything else as is. For audio recording, I'm using the DJI Mic 2 with a little wind jammer on it. These mics are fantastic. And normally what I do is I have this running into the camera and have the receiver mounted on the hot shoe. But the problem I've got at the moment is on this monitor, there's no hot shoe mount. So I've got to work out a way to mount the receiver onto the camera. So it's probably going to end up being a cage just to put around the camera and have a few more mounting points to use with the monitor. The monitor does have a 3.5mm jack plug for headphone monitoring so you can monitor your sound directly from the monitor but generally I'll monitor the sound directly from the camera to hear what the camera's hearing and recording. So here's my thoughts on the Viltrox 550 Pro. It is a great bit of kit for the price. You get everything you need. You've got audio monitoring, focus peaking, you've got zebras, you can install LUTs. It pretty much does everything you're going to need a monitor to do. And for the price point, you can't go wrong. The battery life's good, the screen quality's good, and it just works. The interface is really easy to use. It's kind of similar to like a Blackmagic cinema camera where everything's where you kind of think it should be and it's intuitive. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. If you want one, there's links in the description. 
Probably the only thing I would uh, recommend Viltox change is when you ship this thing, can you make sure that the language is in English because mine was in Chinese and that did take me quite a while to press the buttons to find the language selector. But other than that, super happy with it, great bit of kit. This is the arm mount from Newer. What we want to do first is take this plate off here because that's going to attach onto the gimbal. So undo that by going anti-clockwise. And then you want to put the bolts in. Uh, there's two bolts in total. Put each one in and then we're going to mount it onto the RS3 Pro. You'll see it's an M4 mount. What we're going to do is just line the bolts up with the holes. Tighten up each one and they just need to be about finger tight. And do the same with the bottom. And this is going to allow us to mount the arm to the gimbal. Then get the newer arm and then just start screwing it in. Tighten clockwise until it's locked into place. If you need it any tighter, you can always use an Allen key to lever it into place and lock it in rock solid. Then we use the quarter inch screw into the bottom of the monitor and just guide it in gently. Turn it clockwise. And once it's finger tight, you're good to go on that part. If you want to adjust the angle, just undo that one and just rotate the monitor. Just be careful because it does move pretty quickly and come loose pretty fast. Then once it's in the angle that you want, tighten it up. And now we can see it's mounted to the gimbal. Next step is to put our HDMI cable in, make sure you put it into HDMI in, and then we're gonna put our camera on the gimbal and connect the other end of the HDMI. Plug the HDMI into your camera. You can route it as necessary. This is why I've got the bendy cord. You could spend a bit of time and send it behind the monitor so it's a better fit. Open up the monitor, power everything up, and then you're ready to go with your gimbal mounted monitor. If you found this video helpful, leave a comment below, hit that like button and smash that subscribe. And if you didn't like it, hit that dislike twice. And thanks for watching.